I'm about to pull the tarps off my seriously secret weapon silos where I store my super special AI comic editing stuff, aka tools. That was seven S's, not counting the word seven, which would make it eight. Just saying, let's start. I'm Aaron, this is Camp Peculiar, a channel about making nerdy stuff using AI art that's usually comics, but who am I to say how you use the skills we're about to unveil. All right, this is an oldie but a goodie, and I'm going to throw in some bonus tips along the way. We're going to be talking about the stroke feature, the stroke blending option in Photoshop, or whatever editing application you're using that supports a layer stroke feature. Now, I know what you're thinking. Trust me, the stroke feature that's been in Photoshop since like 1994. No way that's a secret weapon. Well, the way we're going to use it today is, and it's really going to get you out of some mid-journey mishaps, some diffusion difficulties. I promise you'll learn something and it'll be a lot of fun also. All right, well, we're in Photoshop or whatever application you're using that has a stroke feature. And I'm just going to bring up an image. Let's just say we wanted to make a comic with this guy right here. One of the first thing we're going to do always is just look for some things that need to be corrected. I'm going to separate this guy from the background, so I'm not worried about these weird comic bubbles and things like that. But I am worried about this eye right here. So here comes a bonus tip number one that has nothing to do with the stroke feature. Sometimes the smart content fill aware thing, edit content aware fill, will not work no matter what you do. It's not gonna give you the results that you want. So you can see over here, we're on auto and it's done a terrible job. We could go custom and try to sample our own areas and fix it, but there's no way it's going to do a great job. Uh, which leaves us two options. We can, three options. We can uh, hand paint in the correction. We can clone stamp the correction. Or we can use this bonus tip right here, which would be to try to find an area of the image around here that would fit in perfectly here like a puzzle piece. And that for me could be right here. And so you want to get this selection as close as you can and make sure that there's not any gradients and stuff happening because that will all change everything. So once you get that in there, you'll definitely need to do a little bit of uh, some slight erasing. I'm going to use a, a pretty hard brush here and just move over that layer right there. And that just leaves us with this white area in here, which you might be able to fix with just a little bit of scaling. And if you can't do that, then a little puppet warp should get the trick done. Let's just add a real quick eyeball there and then get into this stroke feature. So first thing you'll notice is that there's just a bunch of stuff going on with this image. There are these little hangy things off these hair parts here. Uh, there's this cross section over here, these little bits right here. And then there's this weird toothy horn thing over here. And I just wanna clean all of that up, including these jaggies uh, right over here. And so a really quick way to do that is to first separate your subject, however you see fit. Uh, using the magic wand or whatever sort of auto selection that you have. Um, here I'm gonna go with select subject cloud detail to just show you that even in this situation, it doesn't get it perfectly right. So we have our guy pasted on there and here's where the stroke becomes very handy. If we right click on this layer and go to blending options, and turn a stroke on. The first thing we're gonna do is set it to a very noticeable color. So blue should work okay in this particular situation. Make sure the opacity is up all the way. And we're gonna set the position of that to center. And I'll tell you why that is in just a second. And the trick is to make the stroke big enough so that you can see all the imperfections, but not so big enough that it loses its detail. I just wanted to say upfront that this process works best for lined artwork, artwork that has like color or shading and some sort of like comic lines to it, some inking going on with it. If you're doing a lineless style, this will still work. It will help you find imperfections, missing parts, things that you missed during the selection process. So we have our stroke set up, we have it set to the center uh, and we have a color that's easy to see. Next thing we're gonna do is look for problem areas. And first we can see that it missed the tooth. When I went through the selection process with the magic wand or the smart select, it missed the tooth. So you can correct that really easily. Just just grab a brush tool, get the color that you wanna do. And then just, you can just paint over the area and the blue will go away. And that makes you know that you have done a great job. And then we will get black and then reshape that to be the way that we want to. There's a million other ways you could do that using the clone stamp tool, using the brush tool to fill it. A handy little tip that we're going to be using later to get sharp edges with the brush tool is you can simply hold down shift, click where you want, then click where you want it to end, and it will give you a nice uh, straight line. So if I wanted a straight line here, I would hold down shift, click at the top of the tooth, then click at the angle that I want, and that gets a nice straight line there. 
So we'll call that good enough for this particular demo. The next thing the stroke will help you do is look at parts of your image that are, uh, I will say, wonky and or could be improved. So the next way we're going to use this stroked outline here to help us is we're going to grab a nice hard eraser and make sure that the opacity is 100% and that this doesn't have any soft edges to it. And we're going to go in and just start cleaning up the lines by just erasing. So we don't want that. The other thing you can do is sort of use it to shape your drawing a little bit more and decide where you want uh, sort of curves in there. Again, this works really well if you're going to leave the stroke on at the end. So this feels pretty jaggy here. We'll leave the hat as is, but we want to definitely take care of this part on the hat. So we'll go ahead and just go over that and then just remove the bits. So the last thing to do for this example is to just change the stroke to something that makes sense from blue. So we'll go ahead and just change it for black because this particular artwork's kind of already outlined in black. You can grab actually the color of the outline that you got from the AI art, hit OK. That's the color we got. And then you're going to want to change this to outside or inside. You can leave it at centered if you want and then probably reduce the size considerably. The other thing you can do, another quick bonus tip, is turn on an inner shadow uh, and set the opacity to 100 and set the choke and the size down to nothing and just the size. And then you can move that inner stroke around to try to just get some additional line weight on the shadow side of the image. All right, next example, let's take a look at this image again out of Mid Journey 4. I picked this image specifically because it has a lot of stuff going on around the hat here and around the shoulder that's going to make it difficult for Photoshop to auto select the subject. And so now we're just going to use the secret weapon stroke trick of right clicking on the option. We're going to select blending options. We're going to turn on a stroke. So we'll select a color that's really easy to see. I'm going to go with blue again in this particular case. Again, we're going to set it to center. The reason why we set it to center is because when you go to erase these parts, the thicker that this stroke is, the more that your eraser will have to go into the stroke to actually do anything because the if, if the stroke is on the outside, your eraser has to cross through that stroke and then touch the actual image before it starts erasing. So if you have the stroke on the outside, it feels less accurate because your cursor is kind of going into this unknown stroke territory. And if you have it on the inside, it tends to be a little bit too precise and you tend to delete more than you actually want to. So I have found that the center position for the stroke helps you sort of get that balance between giving you some wiggle room between the image, but not having the cursor go into this no man's land of the stroke area. All right, so the eraser tool, nice hard brush, opacity up all the way, and we'll just start taking care of some problems here. Again, when we're done, we're gonna go ahead and click on the stroke, change the color to something that makes sense, and maybe just reduce the opacity a little bit. All right, so we'll say that we need this for a panel, but we need some characters or an airplane or something happening in this upper left-hand area here. And there's just not a lot of room to have anything noticeable up in that particular area. So we're gonna use the stroke secret weapon again. First thing I'm gonna do is just remove this background by just using a polygon lasso selection. And that should just take me about 30 seconds that I'm not gonna make you watch me do. All right, so we have our background sort of cleared out here and we're gonna go right into the stroke trick here. We'll go to blending options. We're gonna turn on stroke. Um, that color is probably fine, but let's make it blue just because that seems to be the best color. Turn the opacity up. Again, we're gonna set it to center and then make sure it's, it's just thick enough so we can see the detail. Uh, that we want to work with. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and then select the eraser tool. Also worth noting that you can use different types of erasers and erasers that have texture on them or certainly ones that are not round would be helpful. A square brush eraser uh, would be very helpful in situations like this. You can see my selection right here was horrible. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold down shift, click, and then click again up here in this corner and get sort of a straight selection there. And I'll do it again there. And then we can recreate some of the stepping that was involved there by shift clicking there and there. There we go there. And now we can actually start just shaping this building because it's gonna be outlined wherever we cut, it will sort of look like the finished part of the drawing because there'll be an outline around it. So you can literally just start taking floors off and we'll just say that we wanna at least at the very minimum, uh, get rid of this guy right here and we'll just have it cut in like that. Um, maybe we will then get rid of this whole upper floor right here.
So that really opens up that part of the image for some storytelling elements to go in there. And then when you go back in and, and fix the background or whatever you want to do. The last thing you'd want to do, of course, is take care of the stroke. Uh, we'll set it to outside. We'll change the color to whatever existing stroke is in the, in the image already. And then we'll change this to something like five, maybe even less, four. Maybe do a little inner shadow on it. All right, similarly with this uh, Western scene, we got this like, uh, I don't know, it looks like a, uh, it's a car and like a steampunk train coming through this passage here. Let's say we wanted to open up some of these rocks here really quickly. We'll just take out this part of the background, this sky part here. Again, we'll turn stroke on for this particular layer that we're gonna start carving or shaping. Uh, that color is no good because I can't see it. Uh, so we'll go with this color outside. Uh, and then again, we're gonna grab a brush that has no opacity on it, hard brush, make sure caps lock key is off so you can actually see where the brush is. And then you can just start shaping these rocks yourself. The only thing you wanna look out for is where things, uh, you would naturally be able to see the backside of things, like that would be a problem. So there you go, that's the super secret weapon stroke trick where you just isolate a part of the AI comic image that you're working on, put a stroke around it, use that to help you highlight problem areas and also reshape areas that you don't like. Well, there you go. If you like this sort of thing, like and subscribe to the channel. You can also head over to camppeculiar.com to find out about any AI art comic jams that are happening. Also, we have a brand new Discord channel. Just search for Camp Peculiar on Discord and you can hang out there. Share your work. Let me know what you're working on. Ask questions. Generate stuff in the channels. Hang out with other comic campers there. It's really a lot of fun or will be soon. I will see you next time at Camp Peculiar.